Iran in turmoil. Islamic cleric assassinated in brazen daylight attack. This is crazy. In a shocking turn of events, amidst the ongoing protest against Islam, excuse me, Iran's Islamic Republic, senior cleric Ayatollah Abbas Ali Soleimani was brutally assassinated in broad daylight. The 77-year-old hardliner was gunned down in a bank in uh, Babosar, a city just north of Tehran, on April 26th. A chilling video captured by surveillance camera reveals that the attacker or reveals the attacker walking around the bank with a gun before firing at Soleimani. Bystanders intervened to apprehend the assailant, who was later arrested by security forces. With the motive still unknown, Iran's interior ministry has launched a special investigation into this high-profile murder. This brazen assassination is just one of many recent attacks targeting Iran's Shia clergy as public discontent with the Islamic Republic reaches a boiling point. On April 16th, another cleric was the victim of an attempted murder when a car tried to run him over in Tehran. The condition of the 35-year-old cleric is still unknown and authorities are searching for the suspect. Ayatollah Soleimani was a prominent figure and the most high-ranking cleric to be assassinated in recent years. So this is a really big deal because Ayatollah Soleimani was part of the Guardianship Council, if I'm correct. Not only was he part of the Guardianship Council, he it is alleged that he was a member of the Death Council's that would happen in the 1980s where leftist political prisoners in the early days of the Islamic Republic were killed in the thousands. And he allegedly oversaw the body that would dictate these mass, mass, mass executions. Like one of the, one of the most mass killings that's the most forgotten of the past century. He was involved with this. Anyways, so Armin, please... Give us more about this. What are people saying on Farsi Twitter? What is the reaction? Give us the details. So based on the report by the Iranian national TV itself, okay? So I'm not, based on what they're putting out there, okay? Is they're claiming that the assassin, so the guy was part of the guards there, right? They said that he didn't even know who this guy was. Which makes it even worse if what if what the narrative of the Iranian TV is true, it means that he just shot him because he's a mullah, not because he had any specific thing against him. Wow. Because this guy was powerful. This guy was really powerful. This guy was high up there. So this guy is this this is not your average mullah in Iran because we have a lot of average mullahs in Iran. We have a lot of mullahs that they can't do anything, that they have no power, no control, no money, nothing. They're just like, they're just mullahs, okay? Yeah, and a lot of them like have to be like taxi drivers in their spare time to pay for bills, you know, and some of them are like paid millions by the government. So there's a lot of difference. This mullah is handpicked specifically by the Velayat Faqih, by the office of the Supreme Leader himself, and he is in one of the most powerful institutions of the country. So he was at the bank trying to get some money, okay? And if you, we can't show you the video, but the video that we saw of the assassination, the guy just so casually, so casually walks up to him with what I'm assuming is an AK or whatever. I don't know what the gun is, right? And then he just so calmly picks it up and shots the man um it, it's unbelievable how calm he That's was about crazy. the whole thing right and the other thing that is weird about the whole video is everybody in the bank around the assassination so try to explain to me Susie, how did how you could just how could you justify it? what we saw and what we i saw in the video because again we can't show it nobody gets scared nobody runs away what the, fuck? What, the guy the guy that is holding tea calmly the guy that is like the job is to give people tea around the uh, uh, bank there calmly puts the tea down shut walks up to, yeah 
walks towards the assassin and puts his hands on the gun, trying to take the gun away from the from his hand. I thought for a like, second that you said that he was gonna offer him some chai. <laughs> no, 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 no. He like he gives he tries to remove the gun from his hand, but so calmly. Like nobody runs, nobody screams. Okay. So people are like trying to make sense of this video. And one way to make sense, one way people are making sense of the video is that when somebody is shooting a mullah in the bank, everybody knows that they are safe. Like it's it's a pre-assumption. Like there is a pre-assumption that this is obviously we get it. Like we get why this guy is doing this, <laughs> right? Or they I immediately mean, identify that they are not amongst the target. Yes. So when they see somebody just shooting at the mullah, people are like, "Well, of course." <laughs> this, this, oh damn! <laughs> we, oh damn! You know why? <laughs> yeah. I mean that is that is how people are analyzing why nobody is scared like people are like obviously this guy is not going to shoot at us he's shooting at a mullah mm. right that's why nobody is afraid of what they're seeing i don't know if that's a reasonable justification of why everybody's so calm but that's what people are saying on social media about I have why so many questions was calm. So based on the description, because I haven't seen the video, I couldn't find it, but so you have, so you can tell me based on the yes. descriptions of the videos that I have read, it said that he was walking around the bank with a gun for a second before he did this. Like calmly well, what, walking around the bank with an AK. Like not, how did that yeah, not well, he hard... come, but, Okay, the guy was, um, the guy was like a guard himself. Like he, the understanding is that he would have a gun. Mm. People, so he was actually security for the bank? I don't know if he was for the bank. I know he was security, like if kind of, I think he was security for the bank, but I don't know if he was security for the bank or just security. Uh, I think Sasan here is in the live chat. Um, he's He knows, he. can we confirm where there was a security? Hold on, let me see. No, no, because Sasan was I actually can... asking, isn't it illegal for civilians to have guns in Iran? No, and, yeah, yeah, it is, but he was security, so so he, okay, that he makes a, a lot more sense. That makes a lot more sense because other people were saying, Oh, he was probably Kurdish because the Kurdish regions are some of the few that are actually maintained some level of um bearing of arms. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's mean, my understanding. Yeah, there, a lot of Kurdish people have firearms, even if it's um. Okay, oh, so yeah. confusion persisted after that. So the money had been at the bank in the city when another man seized a guard's. Oh no, seized a guard's firearm and began shooting over. Uh, no, this is not right. This is inaccurate. Who's D is saying? I saw the is, video. It was it was like Armin said, a very calm attack. No one even yelled. What the yeah. hell? So guys, th um, this is what I've heard that the guy was um, a guard, okay? That part I am not 100% sure about, mm -hmm. okay? And we cannot trust the narratives of the Islamic Republic's TV, uh, uh, oh, national yeah. TV, okay? But if what they're saying is true, it makes it worse because they're saying that he didn't even know the guy, which means that, which could mean that he was targeting him because he was just a mullah, right? Um, and because of the 10 situations right now um, regarding between civilians and mullahs. Again, I'm not saying that that's, I'm just keep, I'm not making, because it's hard to, for us to know exactly what has happened. So when I'm saying you these things, I'm telling you the narratives that pe that are now popular on social media. I'm not necessarily claiming that these are true. I'm just telling you what everybody is saying and how yeah. they're analyzing the situation, right? Yeah. So, and even, even if that is not, so for example, let, let's think about this skeptically. If that is not what happened, let's, for example, this was not the reason why all of this happened, right? The fact that these are the go-to explanations on Iranian social media, mm. would, that by itself would give you an indication and um, uh, a reflection of what the mindset of people are like right now in Iran. Um, so Hassan was so was mentioning so there's three cases. Two of them we know that people were actively targeting a mullah for one reason or another. Yeah, the guy getting um, shot up at the bank, the guy who they tried to run him over with a car, and then there was another death that happened recently that you just told me about last night. I didn't even know about this. Apparently, there was a mullah that drowned, and people are saying that that was 
another targeted killing as well. But you don't know if you believe that. Because people are saying, yeah. the way you were explaining it to me last night was that people are like, it has to be an assassination. Why would a mullah be swimming? And you're like, mullah yeah. could be swimming. No, yeah. 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 So, so two of them, we know a mullah was attacked. This one and the guy that was run over by a car. Um, the mullah that was run over by a car. Now there's a third mullah that we know is dead and the body has been found. And people are saying it was an assassination. But I, I think it's, I don't see any evidence that it was an assassination. The reason why people say that it was an assassination is because they can't imagine mullahs swimming in a cold day in a lake. <laughs> All right. So it's hard for them to imagine. So the guy was either just drowned because he was swimming in a lake or somebody killed him. But everyone's mind is going, oh, this is another assassination. I don't think that that third one was an assassination. Maybe I'm proven wrong later. But and that, the thing that so many people are hoping that it was as, as was an assassination that shows you even if it even if it's not an assassination just think about where the mindset is like on social media right now if i go on your social social media and tell people like yeah i don't think this is an assassination i would get flooded with attacks right but people are like no no you're wrong this was definitely an attack but even if it isn't, just think how hated these mullahs are that people want this to be not just a random guy die. They want it to be a revenge attack on all of these mullahs. Think about I the am. level of hate that exists right now. In the oh, I know it's real. I mean, Even before this yeah, uprising yeah. happened, I actually, no, I can't say some of the stuff I've read on Persian Twitter. I cannot, I literally on YouTube, I cannot say some of the things I have read on Persian Twitter about the mullahs because it would violate so many different policies. And that was even before this yeah. past year. So, yeah, sometimes I get worried. I'm not going to lie. But I was, yeah, go, go ahead. I was talking to some Iranians on Discord about this. And I was like, so, this guy is like, you must be insane, Armin, to think he wasn't assassinated. How, how, how could you think a mullah would be swimming in a lake? And I'm like, why wouldn't a mullah swim in a lake? I'm like, and they're like, mullahs don't do anything, Armin. They don't what? do anything. <laughs> they just, they're the laziest people on the planet. Like, like this Iranian is like, they're like I like, like they can't imagine a mullah just going out for a swim. They're like it's impossible. Like they're like Armin, you're so naive to think that mullahs would actually like go make an effort to go for a swim. <laughs> like this was obviously so an assassination. <laughs> like this and then there was another guy is like so deep. There was another guy that was like, actually, I know a mullah in our neighborhood that he's a carpenter as well. Like he actually does other work. And the guy was like, impossible. <laughs> so like, I don't believe you. <laughs> like, like that's impossible. <laughs> like, he has hobbies. He does things. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know a mullah. He likes to knit. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god. Yeah. This is funny. Hindu historian is saying I wouldn't swim in a cold day either. <laughs> it's fun <laughs> yeah. to have Hindu historian back in our live chat. I missed him. Yeah, I we'll miss miss him. Yeah. Um, I, so by the way, so I so saying that said, I still feel so bad for my homeland and its people, so much killing and cruelty. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I do agree with that. However, um, I'm not saying Sasan is saying this. Even if people are showing violence and cruelty against the regime. Whether you agree with it, some of it is justified because it's self-defense and some of it might not be self-defense and we might look down upon it. But even if it's not justified, it's very important to put the entirety of the blame on the Islamic Republic. Okay? It's very important to at least focus. Maybe I should say this for me. We should focus our blame on the Islamic Republic because of the environment that it's created for such things to be able to happen, right? Mm. I mean, again, this is a natural response to such a regime when they do something like that. And by natural, I don't mean justified. I'm just, I'm not doing the appeal to nature fallacy. I'm only saying natural. I'm, when I say it's expected, I'm not saying, I'm not justifying all of it at the same time. But again, the responsibility is on the, on the Islamic Republic and not the people. This is, you know, so 
I don't know. Does that make sense? The way I'm thinking about it? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you, let me just, I, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I just want to quickly say, how do you think things will proceed going forward? Because even before the uprising and revolution that's happened within this past year, there were some very high profile targeted murders of mullahs. And I honestly think that that's only going to increase. Yes. Yes. There are a lot of people that are enjoying the fact that mullahs are not feeling safe right now in the streets because they thought like you made us not feel safe in the streets. So this is, you know, this is very, they think this is good. But, um, and also there are mullahs who are now being more, they're more careful. There was, there was a mullah that I, I you saw the video, I think that oh, was, was <laughs> Yeah, so there was one mullah, the Friday pray, uh, the leading um, Friday imam for a, in a city, and he was coming out um, to the mall, and he was telling, uh, he was calling out, he was visiting stores that are letting in women without hijab and telling people to shut them down, right? Which made a lot of people furious because first of he all, he was running around like a little Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, it was like shut this down, shut this store down, like close this store down. But even, I mean, most people understand why this is so frustrating, especially in this economic climate in uh, in Iran, where people are struggling to make money, and he's trying to shut the stores down because they're letting in women without a job. But this was even more frustrating because he doesn't even have the legal authority to do such a thing, right? Um, and he was going around and intimidating stores because they're letting women without a job in. But what happened is the day after they attacked his office and burned it they fire they burned his, his office <laughs> they firebombed his office the day after and then he came out and he said that i was just there thanking people for their work <laughs> even though the videos <laughs> i mean we have it, it, what he's saying is audible in the videos that came out right he was telling us shut it down shut it down and he was like oh i was just there thanking people <laughs> so i mean it encourages a lot of people to be like to be more intimidating because mullahs are like, oh, oh my God, people are actually have power now, right? So it's scary for them, right? They're not um, taking it lying down anymore. Can I show you something else? Like, can I show a leg sweep on YouTube or is that too violent? A leg sweep? Yeah. Yeah. That's not too violent for okay. No. So I'm just I'm just wanna I just want to show you how things are changing in Iran. Just one more video, okay? Um just to see how people who used to intimidate are now being intimidated and it's pretty scary, right? For them. So let me read the caption first. Mm. It says my this is my caption, right? It says a religious man in Iran attempts to impose hijab rules on women without hijab. And this is in the metro, right? Um, so this is describing what's in the video. The situation changes when other men step in to defend the woman, confronting the zealous individual and tossing him around. So I, it's a basic, basically it's a it's a guy that it's a religious person that goes around and tell people uh, to mind you know to wear hijab and stuff. This is how men in Iran are standing up with women in their fight for liberty. Rapid changes are occurring in Iran as citizens reclaim their freedom, pushing back against the long-standing dominance of Islamic zealots and the government's oppressive enforcement. So I'm going to show you the video. This is pretty. This is pretty cool. So, so what you're saying is in a metro, in a, it's in a train, and the the guy the back there, the guy was telling women to wear. Uh, where where their hijab and if people in the train are telling him to get the hell out of the train like you know get the f get the f out of the train right and then <laughs> like the, the woman is saying you should be ashamed of yourself <laughs> so they so they push him out of the train because he was telling women to wear the <laughs> so you have to understand these are people that we grew up being scared of like when you're religious mm -hmm and told you this especially women these are people that women were always had to in iran always had to be afraid of but now he's living in the same fear that he was help um, creating for others so this guy is pushing him out so this is so it's not just women taking off their hijab it's also men standing up for women who are taking off their hijab so this guy like hold his hold his you know shirt and just pull, push them out of the train 
So that's one man. And watch this. There's a man in the yellow shirt that is coming. Just slapped him. We can't see the slap. So this, so the one man shoved him out. Another man came and just slapped that dude. You could hear the slap. Yeah. Oof. Oof. That was <laughs> that was this guy with the yellow shirt. And everybody is taking their turn, right? So <laughs> those men are just <laughs> men are just lining up to have their turn with them, right? And then there's another. So you, you can see. Oh, here. Let's go a little bit back. So you can see that guy. This is this guy with in black. That's what the guy that shoved him hurt first. This is this guy here. This is the biggest guy. You can see like he's like he's walking big. towards. <laughs> yeah, it's a big boy. He's like he he. This big guy. He wants his turn as well. So that was him first. The guy in the yellow shirt second, and this guy in the. He's like, let room. me have a piece. Look at the look the at the way, way he he's walks walking. up. <laughs> he's like, I gotta have my, I gotta have my. Like, 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 yeah. Look at the way. Look, look. He's like, get out of my way. I gotta have, I gotta have my turn with him. I look came at here this. to do two look. things: chew bubble gum and slap <laughs> besieges, and I'm out of bubble gum. <laughs> Yeah, so like at the, I look at now this guy, not the big guy. <laughs> He's just picking him up. Oh, He's so little. And the legs were coming. Do you see that legs? <laughs> Did you see that legs sweep over time? Over time. Yo, the besiege yeah. is so tiny. Dude. Oh damn. Okay. That yeah. <laughs> so, oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. So yeah, there was just a yeah, line of people. Tema oh. saying it's the hold my beer walk. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have beer in Iran. It's hold my chai. <laughs> no, we do have beer, and we I'm now kidding, have I'm more kidding. beer than before. Yeah, yeah. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.